Tonight, is, as I'm looking out at this beautiful crowd, I, I said to myself, I would be remiss, but I think making a huge mistake if some of the first words out of my mouth weren't to say thank you. Thank you for taking the time out of your Christmas Eve schedule to attend Mass and to do so here at St. Mark and Mary. This church is clearly a beautiful church, but with people inside of it, it becomes magnificent. With all the people inside of this church tonight, it just becomes breathtaking. So thank all of you for being here tonight. You know, we don't want to lose the joy of this Christmas season and, and the birth of our Savior arrives in our lives tonight. And the beautiful thing about Christ is this. I, I've always believed that the Immaculate Conception of Mary is, is, is just so beautiful. I've always loved how Jesus Christ himself was conceived because he doesn't have the DNA of a father, which means what? They say scripturally and theologically that every human being is created in the image and likeness in Christ. So the look of Christ is fluid. It changes. So when I look at you individually, I see the face of Christ. When you look at me, you should see the same thing, the face of Christ. When you look at each other, what you're really looking at is another Christ. Because we're all made in the image and likeness in Christ. And we ask that question, what does Christ look like? All you have to do is look in the mirror, or look at the person to the left or to the right of you, and you're going to see Christ. So what we're going to do tonight, and, and we do this uh, every so often at Christmas and Easter, because I just say to myself, it, it, it's a great time. We are all connected by the human family. Every one of us is a brother and sister. Now, we say that theologically, but we live some time during the course of the week as though we are not brother and sister. That we're not connected to the human being next to us. And that's unfortunate, but that perhaps is life. So I'm going to give you the directions of what we're going to do. This might be a tad crazy because there's a lot of people here, but I think if we don't do this, we, we miss a golden opportunity. A golden opportunity to share our hearts and the lives with those around us. So the directions are following. I'll be asking you in your moment to stand, and once you stand, what I'm going to ask you to do is to greet those folks around you with a, a nice Christmas salutation, a welcome, a hi, if that's a person you know, maybe a handshake, a hug, or a kiss, or, or a pat on the back. No. If you're way over here and you see someone that's a family member or a friend and they're way over there, then feel free to walk over there and say Merry Christmas to that person. So you're going to be allowed. And, and growing up, we were never allowed to talk in church, but we're going to give you the opportunity to do that now. So you're going to be able to talk in church and move around to the people around you. And uh, we'll do that for about five minutes and hopefully be able, to, after that, to calm the crowd back down. We'll see if that works. So if everyone would stand and let's go and do what I just explained. Thank you, honey.
something is big and heavy. But this box, oh, this box is so light, I could even just throw it in the air like that. This box seems to have nothing inside of it, but, but it turns out to be that what's inside of this box, I think is actually something that all of us want from each other. You know, that little thing that we just did by reaching out to those around you. If in fact you are sitting next to someone who you don't know enough, you're probably with a family member to the left and to the right, but your family in somewhere through the travels of your pew. So somewhere there's an end to your family and a start of the next. And if you reached out to the person that you do not know and you sh shook their hand and you said something nice, there's a real good chance right now you feel a little bit more connected with those around you than you did at the very beginning. Because that's really what we want from each other is in many ways each other. We're going to try to figure out, because I think what is inside of this box is really something that most people want. And you might receive uh, tonight when Santa Claus comes, perhaps a computer, a television, a, a, a computer game, and all that stuff is nice, and it's great, and it's great to play with. But often what we want isn't those things. We want sometimes, well, well let's do this. Let us watch this, this video. Hopefully you'll see what I mean. The Gold Wrapping Paper, an inspirational Christmas story. Once upon a time, there was a man who worked very hard just to keep food on the table for his family. Angels this particular year, a few days before Christmas, he punished his little five-year-old daughter after learning that she had used up the family's only roll of expensive gold wrapping paper. As money was tight, he became even more upset when on Christmas Eve, he saw that the child had used all of the expensive gold paper to decorate one shoebox she had put under the Christmas tree. He also was concerned about where she had gotten money to buy what was in the shoebox. Nevertheless, the next morning, the little girl, filled with excitement, brought the gift box to her father and said, This is for you, Daddy. As he opened the box, the father was embarrassed by his earlier overreaction, now regretting how he had punished her. But when he opened the shoebox, he found it was empty, and again his anger flared. Don't you know, young lady, he said harshly, when you give someone a present, there's supposed to be something inside the package. The little girl looked up at him with sad tears rolling from her eyes and whispered, Daddy, it's not empty. I blew kisses into it until it was all full. The father was crushed. He fell on his knees and put his arms around his precious little girl. He begged her to forgive him for his unnecessary anger. An accident took the life of the child only a short time later. It is told that the father kept this little gold box by his bed for all the years of his life. Whenever he was discouraged or faced difficult problems, 
he would open the box, take out an imaginary kiss, and remember the love of this beautiful child who had put it there. In a very real sense, each of us has been given an invisible golden box filled with unconditional love and kisses from our children, family, friends, and God. There is no more precious possession anyone could hold. Give yourself in words, deed and example to those around you. 